Welcome to Three Films in a Podcast, the show where Destiny brought together three friends to enhance each other's cinematic journey by watching three new movies in a series of themed rounds. There is no claim of ownership on any film footage used in this episode, as all film footage is owned in its entirety by the copyright holders. And just like every car in Too Fast, Too Furious, this podcast contains spoilers. Enjoy! Hello and welcome back to season two of Three Films and a Podcast. My name is Ben Lawhorn. I'm coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. And as always, I'm joined by Matt Weiler, who's down in Pleasant Grove. Hello and welcome. Unfortunately, Tyler cannot be with us tonight. He has a huge back order of armadillo cakes that he has to get done. Mm. So he's not going to be here, (laughs) but he's in our thoughts for sure. God Um, help the red velvet market over there. Man, what a cake that was. Uh, For those of you new to the show, welcome to the movie club. For those of you who are returning, welcome back to the movie club. We're super excited to have everyone here. We're essentially just trying to have an online movie club group where we all talk about movies and just share our love of them. You can find us anywhere on social media at three films pod, or you can go to our website, uh, three films pod.com. And along the lines of the movie club, we have some amazing returning guests with us today. The host of She Will Rock You, Leah and Beth Ann. Thank you guys so much yes. for coming back. Stoked to have you guys here. Oh, thank Thanks you. for having us. Uh, hopefully this movie won't be as weird as the last one you guys were here for, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't know if we're ever going to top that one. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked that you guys are back. Do you want to tell people about your pod and where they can find you? Yeah, so we have we have quite a lot happening over on our feed at any given moment. Our main show is a bi-weekly rock history show where we take turns telling each other about an artist or a group that usually was famous before you were even born. We also mm-hmm. have interviews with uh, up-and-coming artists and women in the industry, from photographers to journalists to band members. Um, and then we're, we're trying out some new show formats in the new year, so... Come see what Come we got over check there. Check it out. Yeah. You can find very, us anywhere you get podcasts. <laughs> yes. Just everywhere. Just yeah. Just everywhere. Find it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I I love you guys, Pod. Um, we've had like I said, we've had you on before where we talked about the Buddy Holly story, <laughs> which got Gary Busey's Oscar nomination, as crazy as that sounds. That's all very I think true. about that movie once a week now. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Like Is I'm it the glad gum, that we the gum in the tooth. <laughs> yeah, it just pops oh, in my head randomly it's, and i'm like eh. <laughs> it feels like we all have like a, a shared trauma now like we've all experienced <laughs> yes. it we all talked about it like I, and this is our group therapy session yes yeah. what this yeah. is. exactly that's what yeah. this is um luckily this week hopefully won't be as too crazy this this movie this week was a blast i'll you know put my cards out there right now i loved what we watched this week Mm-hmm. Um, but before we get into that, you guys have already answered our clubhouse question. So if anybody wants to watch or listen to those, you can find that either on YouTube or any of our, you know, anywhere you find the podcast, we have that. And then the episode as well on the Buddy Holly story, that movie was crazy, but the podcast was a lot of fun. So go check it out. Um, but yeah, this week we are wrapping up this round of movies, which is essentially you know, Matt chose it and it was just basically, we need to have at least two female leads. And that was just uh self-reflection on us after we did our year end awards. And we realized that we had like 30 guys that were up for best actor and three women who were up for best actress. Like, Oh, we did a horrible job <laughs> of like picking <laughs> movies and balancing this out. So yeah, we chose this category and we've watched some fun movies. We watched uh last night in Soho. Um, last week we talked about beaches And this week we were talking about Steel Magnolias, which is a movie that I've had on my radar Mm -hmm. for a very, very long time. Just the poster itself. It's just like a powerhouse of Mm -hmm. women in this movie. Just to go over like the the top six women here. We have Shirley MacLaine, Olympia Dukakis, Sally Field, Dolly Parton, Daryl Hannah, and relative newcomer at the time, Julia Roberts, which is insane mm-hmm. to say that yeah. like, <laughs> the sixth person on your call sheet is Julia Roberts. Like that was crazy. We watched this movie, uh, my girlfriend and I, and then got on YouTube because I like watching all the making of or anything that mm-hmm. I can find. And they had all five except Daryl Hannah on the Donahue show <laughs> back in the day. Mm. And it was so funny hearing people like asking Julia, like, have you ever been in any movies before? Oh, <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, I was in Mystic Pizza. And it's like, it's crazy to think about like her just being brand new. And it's like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. she was the rookie of this group. Julia, is this your first movie? 
Uh, no, Steel Magnolias was my fifth oh. movie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Kind of maybe with Daryl Hannah, but it's like, yeah, she was the unknown basically of this movie. And now you can make the argument that she's the most famous, most popular out of all. Yeah. Of them. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I love this movie. I had a great time with it. I was very glad. Like a lot of these movies that I've had on my queue that we get to watch, it's like, okay, this is cool. I'm glad I got to see this, uh, lived up to what I was hoping for. And I feel like I was at the right time in my life to enjoy this and maybe understand it. You know, if I had watched it a lot younger, I'm, you know, probably would have felt a lot differently about it. So mm-hmm. I had a great time. Uh, this was my first watch, but I want to hear from all you guys what you thought about the movie, Leah. I'm going to throw it to you first. If you will give us the very accurate and detailed uh, synopsis from IMDb for okay. <laughs> Steel Magnolias, then just kind of tell us your experience and your history with the movie. Brace yourselves for this riveting summary. <laughs> I'm ready. A young, a young beautician, newly arrived in a small Louisiana town, finds work at the local salon where a small group of women share a close bond of friendship and welcome her into the fold. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's but, all. Uh, for, <laughs> whoa, you, nailed it, you nailed it to a T. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> for, a, for a better synopsis, may I read you this letterbox review? Oh, that I would I sent love that. Again? Started... <laughs> Started watching this and thought, oh, this is a nice, happy, heartwarming film. And then the last half an hour was like, bitch, you thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's insanely accurate. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, that last half hour, I mean, Sally Field, just like, man, she She's owned so that last little bit. She oh. was fantastic. This is obviously the spoiler pod, so we can talk about anything that we want. But Leah, was this your first time seeing this and you... I, th- I think we had maybe message and you had seen like the stage play or something like that. Is that right? Well, this is probably my third time seeing the movie. Okay. And I've seen the stage show twice. Nice. Actually, so I watched you- it this year. I went to go see a production of it. So. Oh, really? I oh, love that's it. Awesome. I love it so much. Um, it's it, I forget how different it is from the stage show because in the stage show, the obviously the entire thing happens in the hair salon because you can't just oh. jumping mm. locations. Interesting. Um. And I think I, I like both for different reasons. Like the stage, yeah. obviously it works better on stage that way. Um, but every time I just know I'm going to sob at the end. So mm-hmm. I have to space out my viewings and watchings. Um, <laughs> it hits, hits harder as a stage show. I think especially mm. yeah. like the last production I saw, they converted the whole theater to be a hair salon. So you were like oh, sitting whoa. in like the waiting room of the hair salon. Wow, Super cool. cool. Everyone was sobbing at the end though. But yeah. I, this, this movie is basically the kind of town I wanted to live in as a child. Mm-hmm. Like this is it's basically the town I live in now. I just can't walk everywhere. So mm-hmm. I feel like I can relate to it. That's a fair, <laughs> that's a very fair assumption. Yeah. What, what did you think about it, Bethany? I, I mean, I loved it. It was my first time seeing it. Like it, oh. it's one of those movies you hear in the movie oh. sphere along Mm -hmm. with Casablanca, Citizen Kane, North by Northwest, right? But Mm -hmm. do you actually see it? And the answer for me was no. But I'm so glad I did get to see it. One thing, Leah, you might have the answer to this. Was it first a stage show or Mm -hmm. was it a... Okay, Mm -hmm. that makes sense because when Mm -hmm. I was watching it, I saw the three acts and it felt like the the pacing of it four yeah. acts but yeah. if the pacing of it felt like a stage show like it felt like an adaptation so and the the cast of the stage show is only the ladies you don't see any of the men gotcha ever. oh that's right yeah i remember reading about that they had like so, so the guy who wrote the play i think wrote the screenplay for the movie yeah he had and kind of talked about that having to add in the men because they talk about them a lot as i understand in the stage show yeah. but we just we don't see them at all so it's kind of interesting Man. to see what he had to to add in i think some of the dialogue definitely felt very stage heavy i think we kind of mm-hmm. felt that way matt when we watched uh glenn gary glenn ross you know it's like oh this is mm-hmm. a lot of like kind of the quick dialogue in one location which i think worked really well yeah. in this I, I love that when it's done well and i think when the screenwriter or when the playwright becomes the screenwriter i think that definitely mm-hmm. helps a lot with a this lot of it ad- adaptation Sorry. no please a lot please, of it is the same dialogue as nice. the stage show it, it was very fresh in my in my brain. I was like, this is the exact same dialogue. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though, to think about, like, 
I guess, making the decision of now where they're going to say the dialogue, because we we are in the salon quite a bit. But Mm -hmm. we also get to see at least the neighborhood, maybe not the whole town, but, you know, a lot of the neighborhood and we get a feel for how close everyone is. Like every time Shirley McLean's walking up with that fucking dog, you know, like <laughs> all that kind of stuff. It's like, Oh man, I, I, again, like I haven't seen the stage thing, but I loved that about the movie. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah, kind of setting the tone. Like, Oh, here comes Weezer. Here we go. You know, someone's coming in, but I, I thought it worked really well. Definitely. It reminded me of fences. If you've seen that, oh, okay, with yeah. Washington, which is also from a play. Mm-hmm. And you know, something about those adaptations, they can go one of many ways, either you're into the dialogue or you're not. And I think where this movie did thrive was adding those scenes, like the crossbow scene and the Mm. gun scene. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm so glad that we got to see that where he takes a crossbow (laughs) and shoots at some fucking birds. (laughs) I was losing it. Yeah. (laughs) And I don't know how that tree did not catch on fire. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I, I loved it. It was such a knock knockout like and the casting was just chef's kiss like i loved everyone in their role queen dolly yes oh my god she was so good like the only i don't even know if it's a nitpick but it's just like it's an impossible feat of making daryl hannah not attractive i was getting very (laughs) much like she's all that vibes like oh you just put glasses on her that doesn't make her unattractive like (laughs) yeah Yeah. exactly like she's not it's she's not dorky or anything but she did a really good job in that role the the turns that her character takes like becoming super religious and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. i think everyone did did super well Mm -hmm. matt was this your first watch for steel magnolias yeah and and similar to to you guys like i've heard about it my whole life i swear i've probably even referenced it before like acting like I knew mm-hmm. what I was talking about, but, um, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. It was just like every once in a while you come across a movie that, you know, has a cult following that is, is hyped to some extent. Um, but you're watching and you're like, man, this really is just like a treasure of its time. Mm-hmm. And, and even now, like, this is just really cool to watch. And like similar to, uh, we watched beaches, uh, last week and similar to beaches, like, you, I, I, I recognize that I miss sort of like the way that the score plays with these movies mm-hmm. back then. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's got sort of, I, I don't know how to, I don't really know how to articulate it, but like it has its own vibe. It fits like that sort of hometown aesthetic. It almost feels like a family movie, but it's not like, this isn't technically a family movie. I mean, it is about relationships, a drama, mm-hmm. but it, the, the way that it was scored just really like, made me feel like I was part of the town. Almost like a similar to like a Miyazaki movie where that music just gives you the feeling of just being a part of that that group. The other thing I wanted to say was backing this up to this round, it's kind of funny that we we tried to focus on like female leads and we ended up with like all male directors and writers and Mm -hmm. it didn't cross over into any of the other roles (laughs) in these movies. But um, but no complaints here. I I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed Beaches. I actually recently watched Mystic Pizza like Mm. four weeks ago. Um, So it was cool to see sort of get my tour of Julia Roberts beginnings. Yeah, and explore it that way, and it seems like she didn't. Uh, she mo- had to have moved right into Hook after this because of that haircut. So mm. oh, exactly, I had that same that's thought. A good that's point. the Tinkerbell cut right there. Yeah. <laughs> My other favorite Letterbox review was: "It's a shame Julia Roberts had to die with that awful haircut." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was pretty intense. It's so <laughs> she turns bad. around it's and is like, it's a little "Oh, you don't like it?" Like uh, reincarnated as Tinkerbell. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was that was rough um yeah i think i mean all those points are right like i i felt like i was part of the town like i was in the neighborhood there i couldn't tell exactly where it was at first like we saw some palm trees so like is this south carolina or whatever but i guess they they shot it in louisiana i'm assuming do, like do they ever establish exactly where it takes place i don't know for sure yeah it's um in shoot I just read it when I was looking at it. They kept bringing up Shreveport. So Louisiana. Louisiana, All right. That makes sense. But 
yeah, I definitely felt part of the community and you, you get that vibe, even just like from the wedding where everybody's there and even, I don't know, the, just so much of the salon and all their connections. You feel like these women have known each other forever. Um, but that makes me kind of want to go into, I, I guess, you know, Bethany talked about how this like it gets up there with all these great movies in the past that have been mentioned. And I want to know, like, what do you guys made this movie? Like what makes steel Magnolias? Like, uh, you know, what is it made of? Why is it essential viewing for people? And almost more, not more importantly, but also like, how does it still hold up? Cause I think mm-hmm. it does, you know, after mm-hmm. all this time, I think it's still just as important as it was back then It came out in 89. So it's not like insanely old by any means, but th- there's definitely been a passage of time. And I think this th- thing still is, is very important. Beth, I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw it to you for that. Yeah, I honestly think it comes down to dialogue. There is, it reminded me of going to go see Infinity Wars, where, Mm. which is probably like not the best comparison, but there is this high level of humor and this high level of sadness. Mm -hmm. And while I would compare the writing of that movie to more situational and scenario based, because this is a play, that's where its strength comes. It's like adapting a Shakespeare. It's going to hold over time after time. Mm. So I think that's what makes it essential. All the jokes land. Mm. Every joke is delivered perfectly by the actor. And every sad moment just peers through the screen. And I think those emotions are just timeless to any audience that watches it. Yeah, I I agree with that 100%. Like, I think arguably the least funny person in here the way they're written anyway is the daryl hannah character but she even gets Mm -hmm. like a great line towards the end but when you've got shirley mclean and olympia dukakis kind of going back and forth it's just (laughs) yes it's great and then don't even like not even mentioning like dolly parton and i think she had some of the best lines of the whole movie and then you know sally field i don't know everybody was so wonderful in this leo for you like what what makes steel magnolias it's one of the rare instances of women written by men that works and i don't mean that in like a knocking way but like i forget it's written by a man all the time like all the time because i i feel like it it was written the playwright wrote it about his sister who died from diabetes yeah Mm -hmm. but it feels like it was written by a mother who lost her daughter from diabetes like it doesn't it just i don't know he has a probably really awesome woman in his life that he based it off of yeah um and it just, it feels so real. Like ev- I think every woman I know has that group of friends where you don't see them every day, but like when you get back in town with them when you're visiting or mm-hmm. when you meet up every couple of months at the hair salon, like you can pick <laughs> up where you left off and just start, you know, gossiping about everyone in the town. This mm-hmm. is me and Leah's life. <laughs> yeah. All the time. <laughs> Literally all the time. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, I love that. We kind of talked about that same theme last week with beaches where it's just like you get together after a long amount of time, but it's really like nothing has passed. You know, you can you know pick up on what's happened, but it's not a strain necessarily on the relationship. It's like, cool, we're here back together now. So let's just keep going kind of thing. And that was very apparent, I think, in this movie. Obviously, Sally and Julia are, you know, mother and daughter in here. So they have the connection, but everyone else is kind of coming from the outside together to this one spot. Uh, and I think it just, it pays off really well. Honestly, just, it's really making me want to watch the stage show. Cause I'm like, oh, I can imagine how yeah, great it is here. to so have it all good. in the salon and how they, they balance that out because we see so many cool sets here and locations like the cemetery and the wedding and all that, but to have it all in one location, uh, m- must just be awesome. Um, Matt, what, what for you, what makes steel magnolias? Yeah, I mean, I was to echo what you said, I was going to bring up beaches again, where you're seeing a relationship conveyed that um, similar to like romance movies where it's like sort of uh, giving you a a glamorized like view of some like romance and it makes, you know, you want, it makes you want that, that same type of, Mm -hmm. you know, romantic relationship. I feel like this does that with that unit of women and their relationship. It makes the audience like want that unit in their lives and it makes you feel a part of it. And so it's just like that cool feeling. I don't know that you're, you're part of like this greater unit um, Mm -hmm. and just like the unconditional love of it all. Um, Yeah. Even, even in like the highs and lows of their relationship that is conveyed throughout the movie, there's just like, there's still a strong unit that, you know, is there for each other through Mm -hmm. everything. Uh, Yeah. And they don't all necessarily like have the same viewpoint. Like Weezer 
hates <laughs> Malin's husband, you know, hates like, I mean, just goes after him right away, but they're still able to just like be together and still talk and have all that. And their relationship, you can tell is very uh, strained drum, which I think is one of the coolest names. <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> the name is drum, but I think that's awesome. But you know, with him shooting all the guns and stuff like that, the birds and it driving Weezer crazy because of the dog and all that kind of stuff. I've got to talk to Malin about her husband. He is a boil on the butt of humanity. I'm sorry, Weezer. This whole thing has gotten out of hand. It's not your fault, Malin. You know, I used to think you were crazy for marrying that man. Then for a few years, I thought you were glutton for punishment. Now I realize you must be on some mission from God. And we see the strain in their relationship. But then at the end, you know, after their the funeral, it's just like the simple kind of like pat on the back thing and walk off. It's like our problems aside, we do have an unconditional love for each other. And I'm, you know, I'm sorry for what you went through, all that kind of stuff. I think that is very well conveyed in here that these these women are all so connected and they bring in like Daryl Hannah's character pretty openly as well. You know, like mm-hmm. she's brought into the group pretty quickly. And I think mm-hmm. that's just, I don't know, it's that friendship dynamic, I think, that makes all the difference. And that hospitality, I guess, that's involved of, you know, being from the South and all that kind of stuff. And that, I think, it gets shown really well in in this movie. Um, mm-hmm. We often, when we're, you know, talking to people about our podcast, people ask what we're watching or talking about, that kind of a thing. And occasionally people will be like, why are you watching that? For example, uh, we did a round on Spielberg and my dad asked what we were watching. I said, uh, well, one of the movies we're watching is Ready Player One. It's like, why are you watching that? <laughs> like, that's not like a Spielberg movie, you know? It's like, yeah, but I mean, it is. It'll be an interesting conversation. Uh, and I think when that comes up, you, you kind of have to give someone like the elevator pitch on why you chose this. I don't know if you guys run into that with the artists that you guys choose, but mm-hmm. we find it's it's nice to have an idea of like why we're watching something and telling somebody that. So Along those lines, I'm kind of curious if you guys had somebody who hadn't seen Still Magnolias but was interested and you got to show them one scene from the movie. What scene would you show them and why? And uh, Leah, I'm going to throw it to you first. I think the scene at the beginning where Anel shows up and they're all outside of the beauty shop and they're grilling her about her past and they're like saying that it's nice to know someone with a past. Mm hmm. I think that's the scene that you should show people. Are you married or not? These are not difficult questions. Well, we're... I can't talk about it. Of, of course, course you can. can. Uh, yeah, it's, I it's think a great setup. Really is like that. The small mm-hmm. town. Yeah. And then like when she, I think I forget exactly what the line is. But she's like, oh, I don't think I could talk about it. And like, Dolly Parton and I forget who it is like yeah you can you can talk yeah, about yeah. it like, please like we want to hear all about this please let us know but I think that shows their dynamic so well it's just like that's part of the friendship too is kind of getting the inside details on each other's lives and all the goss and I think mm-hmm. that's a, a great scene because I feel like that's kind of when she's maybe officially welcomed into the group you know it's like when mm-hmm. everyone can kind of like you know tear down their walls and be open with each other Bethan how about you what would be your elevator pitch clearly the gym scene I mean the football locker, you know, <laughs> so many butts, so many Charlie McClain no using her mirror. Seen in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> no, it probably, unfortunately, as sad as this is, because it sets the tone for the film, it would have to be the scene where Julie Roberts and Sally Fields are getting their hair done. Cause I think it has good moments of dialogue that are funny, but it also sets the reality of Julia Roberts character being sick. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. That would probably be the scene I would go to. I think that's solid. Their dynamic, this movie. I mean, quick side note here. I had to look up how old Sally Field was because like, can she be her mom? Yeah, I was but thinking she that is. too. She's like 21 years older. It's like, oh, like they honestly could have been sisters. In my eyes. It's like Sally Field looks great. I mean, she still she does. does, you know, but even mm-hmm. back then I was like, I don't know if I buy this, but I guess she told the casting director, like, I have a son who's almost 20. So like I'm. You know, I fit for the role. It's like, I guess that's true. Mm-hmm. But their dynamic was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, this isn't my scene, but one that really stuck out to me is the one where she tells her mom she's pregnant and just like Sally Fields, basically non reaction and all that kind of stuff is just so powerful. And just, you know, like, what do you always tell us? You want us to be happy and 
just her concern for her daughter and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that, that their dynamic, the whole movie was, was off the charts. I loved it. Matt, how about you? What's your, what would be your elevator pitch? Well, it's probably not a great idea to use the last scene of a movie, like a bunny riding on the back of a motorcycle. <laughs> uh, I loved that by the way. I, and I like how oh, it, like, totally. kinda, it stayed there for a minute too. Like, you, it wasn't just one second. You got to watch the bunny ride on that motorcycle for like yes. <laughs> the closing four minutes of the movie. Um, but uh, I'd probably go. So I've started to use this elevator pitch um, in a movie like this or in a movie that like people know exist. I started to go with a scene that like just like completely took me aback. Like, what the freak am I watching? Mm-hmm. Like, this is cool. But like, this is the most insane thing I've seen. And I've got to go with the armadillo cake. <laughs> Yeah. Just seeing that thing cut up and the red and all that and just like the conversations around it i'm like this is this is insane <laughs> this movie is like i don't know and it, it's a good like sample of just like the characters that you get in the mix here mm-hmm. um i'd love to see i mean I, those are two scenes like the the bunny right on the back of the motorcycle and the armadillo cake um i it, it, those are two reasons i'm glad that this was uh adapted into a movie yeah. Um, yeah, but I'd love to hear the this dialogue around those things. <laughs> yes, yeah. I love that so much too. Because is it? It's Shirley MacLaine, right? That's like serving up the armadillo cake, I believe. Yes, yeah. yeah. And you know, she hands Tom Skerritt like the butt. You know, obviously, like for her little <laughs> innuendo, of, like you're an asshole. Here you go. And the way he's able to turn, he's like, "Oh, I love a nice piece of ass." You know, <laughs> like, walks off. It just like frustrates her. It's like, oh, just I, their dynamic was was so good in here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that cake was. <laughs> something else that was a is choice that, is that a common thing a groom's cake i don't know that I've it's seen a southern kind of thing i think is yeah it? okay yeah i kind of wondered about that i was like i don't know that i've ever heard of a, a groom's cake before but usually mm. the groom's cake is styled in some kind of like super obnoxious decorative thing that either like if he likes golf it might be a golf ball like oh, okay a green. yeah um and it my usually husband's was served. batman nice so i just oh, had the cool. batman logo on it that's cool a lot better than an armadillo. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. No, if I had seen it, I would have gotten an armadillo cake. Yeah. I'm, not even, I'm not even kidding. A red impressed. velvet armadillo? Oh, well, hell yes. <laughs> Maybe I can convince my brother to get that for his groom's yes. cake. Yes. Do it. You may Please. be able to. Let's start a petition for that. <laughs> um, For me, the scene that I love the most, like it follows one of the most heartbreaking scenes of the movie, which is Sally Field's speech, you know, in the mm-hmm. cemetery. And then she, you know, talks about, I just want to hit something. And then Claire just like holds Weezer for like, hit her, hit her, you know, like <laughs> that whole thing was so great. It's like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, you've always wanted to hit it. That kind of a thing. But the follow-up scene where they're on the bench together, kind of talking to each other and then like kind of wrestling each other off the bench um, and kind of, I don't know, wrapping things up that way and becoming friends again. I think that really, to me, like we talked about early on and what makes this movie, it is the unconditional love. It's like, you can be, angry at somebody you can be upset whatever but you know the people that love you and that have your back and you know eventually it's like all right we're cool like things are fine i'm, I'm glad that we're friends yeah. that kind of a thing mm-hmm. and i just really like that dynamic of the two of them on the bench together and through you know joking and all that kind of stuff like mending the fences of like what had happened earlier on and i'm just always here for olympia dukakis and shirley mclean like just giving the two of them some screen time together I, I I just loved so much about this movie, but the two of them were yeah, up there for sure and with can, my favorites. I'm oh, sorry. Can, go ahead. Oh, sorry. And can I just, I want to touch on your scene for a second, please. I have to say that was the, the best representation of a really sad peak moment going into something really fucking funny. Mm-hmm. Like you are, I am crying at this point and then I start dying laughing. Yes. Like something about that emotional roller coaster is such mm-hmm. an achievement. I know that mm-hmm. sounds odd, but it is an achievement. Like I can't really think of a moment in a movie I've seen other than like maybe the princess diaries, where it was this really <laughs> sad moment and then it became really funny. Like <laughs> that is like an achievement of like good script writing. Yeah, 100%. I had the exact same thought and I couldn't even think of another. I still can't really think of another example no. um, of that, but it was the, it was the exact same. Like, yeah, we're watching it and I want to die of sadness. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden everything's OK again. 
It's just yeah. really Suddenly, good bait and switch almost. It really is. It's like but, the most. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that's how it would play out in real life, though. You know, like mm-hmm. if we were with our friends in a sad moment, <laughs> someone would say something mm-hmm. stupid and we'd all It'd be, be dying, me. So. It would be me. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the stupid thing. <laughs> but you got to, you know, cut the tension. And I think, I think Dolly even says like right after that, she's like, that's my favorite emotion. Laughing while laughing crying. Through tears yes. is my laughing through tears. Laughing through tears. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, that's exactly what it is. Like just to, to mend that, because that is just, we've witnessed a parent go through the hardest thing in the entire world, you know, and I was getting so choked up at Sally Field's speech. Like, oh my God, like this is like, I don't even have kids and this is like fucking wrecking me. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. And then just to immediately be like, punch her, punch her. It's like, wait, yeah. what's happening right now? Like, but you know, friends know each other, just kind of like siblings, you know, it's like, you know, what can help like break the tension or whatever, you know, that kind of a thing. And I think we really saw that in this scene. Um, one little fact from watching that Donahue thing is that I learned that. So we went to a lot of like single shots of the women reacting to Sally Field's like speech. And I guess like she did that scene for all of them for their like reaction shots. So she did that like a handful of times, like full Mm -hmm. emotion, did everything so that the women could get their shots. I was like, oh my God, like I would be drained just doing that once. Like I can't imagine like giving it your full effort for everybody. But again, like, I mean, we had multiple Oscar winners in this movie at that point. I think Julia hadn't even been like nominated yet, you know, and, a Sally Field had an Oscar. I don't know, just a, a great group of women here. And uh, yeah, I really loved that scene, just all the, the their dynamic that we get to see in there. If anybody's taking a shot for every time I say dynamic, I apologize. You're probably <laughs> blacked out right now, but I don't know how else to describe like what these women have, the chemistry they have together. Along those lines and how stacked of a cast this is, I've got to say that through a majority of this movie, I could not figure out who our protagonist is because we're kind of just with, all of them all the time mm. you know like we the first person we see is daryl hannah and then we go to the salon but along the way we pass the wedding where we see sally field and julia roberts and just all this kind of stuff i think sally field is probably the protagonist you know if you really have to like break it down because everything is kind of she's the core of everything that happens you know but all that to say that this this cast is amazing and we have a thing that we've taken on here in season two called their Apollonia Award, which happened after we watched Purple Rain, where mm. obviously Prince is our protagonist. But Apollonia is like kind of lives on past the movie. It's like who we know about the waters of Lake Minnetonka, like all that kind of stuff. So we like to give out the Apollonia Award to our favorite co-star of the movie who we think did the best alongside the protagonist. So I want to throw this to you guys. Um, Leah, I'm going to throw it to you first. Who won your Apollonia Award? It's got to be Dolly because without a good Truvy, the show falls apart. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work because you need, there are good hairdressers who will get you to talk the entire time you're in their chair. And there are bad hairdressers that make you want to leave the second that they're done. (laughs) And Dolly would be the first kind of hairdresser. She was Awesome. I would that pour was, my soul out to Dolly in a hair <laughs> oh, <yeah>. chair. <laughs> no in question. In a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's just like, yeah, I would tell her anything that she wanted to know. Probably mm-hmm. stuff she didn't want. I would just like, <laughs> tell her everything. I like that she and uh, Daryl Hannah, I guess, like, I don't know if they went to hair school or whatever, but they practiced for like four months because that first scene with her, she really does like the hair throughout the whole wow. scene. And she really wanted to know how to do it and not look like she was faking it because I think she does Julie Roberts hair in that first scene. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, they actually like went to school and learned how to do this. That's very cool. Uh, that was super impressive that that they did that because I could see that throughout the progression of the scene. Like, oh, this is like looking very good and very legit. And yeah, she kind of did it all. So Dolly is a great selection. Beth Ann, who is your Apollonia Award winner? It's tough because it's between two and that would be Weezer and Clary. Um, and I think the one that edges out a little bit more is Weezer. and mm-hmm. I think it's because of her complex emotions just speaks to me as far as for we meet her and she's very frustrated and angry that her fucking neighbor is trying to kill some birds (laughs) (laughs) just clear them them. thank Mm. you and you just you kind of at first she's kind of like oh god she's that one of the group but then you kind of see as she goes on like everyone embraces her for who she is 
And I love the complexity in that that Shirley MacLaine brings to it. I mean, it's also just a funny role. Like she is mm-hmm. the comedy mm-hmm. relief along with Olympia Dukakis, like the two of them tag teaming each scene, you know, just as good as a Laurel and Hardy or any yeah. other famous group. Um, but yeah, that was, I, I would have to go Weezer on it. Come on, you watch the news, you know what kind of world we're living in. Walk me home. Who's gonna walk me home? You've got the flashlight. My car's parked over there. Come on, I wanna talk. This is I... ridiculous. You're just only a Will few you feet away me? from here. Follow me. My goodness, you're acting like a child. You know that? I'm not the a child. The older you get, the sillier you get. The older you get, the uglier you get. That's a great choice. Uh, the feeling that I'll be talking about her shortly, but I, I think one thing you could see in a lot of this movie being shot is it feels like these women must have had just a fucking great time making this movie yeah. together because mm-hmm. it just like even the, I mean, there's super emotional scenes, but just to be able to spend time a couple months or whatever with this group would just be fantastic. And I think that came across on the scene really well. And Shirley McLean was a huge part of that. Matt, who who's your Apollonia award winner? I mean, we've talked about the dialogue. We've talked about like the perfect casting. And so that combination has made it really hard to choose because everyone has their moment and they have their quips and it's just, it's so hard. I do want to give a shout out to Olympia because she passed this year in May. I don't know if anyone yeah, saw that. I saw that. Um, so rest in peace. It was, she did so great in this movie, but uh, I got to I got to go with Lee on this one. It's got to be Dolly. I felt like Dolly loved me. And I felt like she yes. understood me. She does love you. That's yes. the thing. She, she does, does love, love you. you. And I, really I could does. I could go in there and I like we already said, like she would be interested in everything I have to say. And mm-hmm. I don't she know, makes, it's hard to convey that. Yeah. She makes everyone who's in that chair feel like the most important person in the world. And that's yeah, Leah, you said it perfectly. There's some that make you want to talk and there's some that just make you want to get out of there. And she just mm-hmm. makes you want to stay there as long as possible. Like just wash it out and do it again. I just want to keep hanging out. Like she, was, <laughs> she was great. Um, and just like her salon, it's kind of a safe haven, you know, of sorts where everyone can come together. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, on, honestly, I just want to say ditto to basically everything Beth Ann said, because that was mine. It was either Shirley or Olympia because they played so well together. I think Shirley takes the edge for me here. Uh, just even just the physical stuff of like wrestling with that dog um mm-hmm. again like her relationship with tom scarrett and they're like back and forth hatred for each other you know was there and she's just a character i think that really kind of changes the audience's mind maybe by the end of the movie where at first like oh who is this lady because everyone's like mm-hmm. oh weezer's coming watch out you know it's like oh <laughs> oh it's this lady but then by the end you're like oh she's awesome like i i she's great you know she's such a fun part of that movie Matt spoke about the casting. I can't imagine any of this having been done better. Everybody played their role perfectly. And I, yeah, it's just, again, part of what makes this movie great. And just like, I don't know, timeless. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we like to do here occasionally is take a trip to the Adam driver drive in and basically like have our own double features. And I love it. It's welcoming. It's just like Truvy's place. Everyone's welcome. Mm -hmm. You can come stay here as long as you want. And we are going to be putting on each of us our own double feature to show Steel Magnolias and something else in whatever order you want. And I'm very curious to hear what you guys would show and in what order. And Beth Ann, I'm going to throw it to you first. Okay, so I actually watched this movie before I came on because I hadn't seen it in a long time. So I would go. Probably Steel Magnolias first, only because for chronological reasons, like that came out first. I really can't think of any other reason. But the second movie would be Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. Oh, okay. Yeah. Both based in Louisiana, both deal with mother and daughter and the surrounding, you know, posse of women. And it's the same style of humor that I personally love. It's old ladies who have learned to curse and make it poetry. (laughs) Nice. It's what I aspire to be as I get older and crotchety is to make my cursing poetic. So that's honestly, when I was watching it, that movie was coming to mind um, because they're kind of similar in a way. But when I went back and rewatched it, it, I think that movie still holds up pretty good. 
My only thing, if you're going to watch it, you're going to have to put some heavy trigger warnings because this was 2002 when it came out. And they didn't believe in trigger Ooh. warnings because there's yeah. like scenes of like child abuse and scenes mm. of like it's 1930 South. So like kind of like racial stereotypes that I wouldn't agree with, nor would I make the artistic decision to portray it the way they did. Mm -hmm. But regardless of those things, it's still a great film full of great laughter, good moments of good jokes and moments of um, high drama and tear jerking kind of emotions. So I would put those two together. Nice. Awesome. That's a great choice. Leah, how about you? What's making your double feature? Uh, so I didn't know that you just did beaches and I had already chosen that as oh, my nice. double feature. That's, great so, <laughs> That's perfect. Um, I don't know which one I'd show first. I don't know if it matters. You're going to end up crying either way. <laughs> so yeah. Take your pick, roll a dice, figure out how, which one goes first. But they, I, it's been a while since I've watched beaches. I, I really want to rewatch it now, but I remember having very similar feelings and they just go perfectly together. Honestly, that was the first thought I had too. It's like, I would just do the one we just talked about last yeah. week. <laughs> I think that that's a good yeah, works pick. so well. Um, Matt, how about you? What's your double feature? Um, I just told everyone that I watched Mystic Pizza a few month or a few weeks ago, um, and so I'd I'd give everyone else the Julia Roberts tour. I'd start off with mm. Mystic Pizza. We'd move into Steel Magnolias, and if you're around for a third flick, a triple feature. Ooh, let's go right into Hook. Eat. What's the deal? Where's the real food? Eat what? There's nothing here. Gandhi ate more than this. You know, Good let's, see where, let's see where this ends up. Nice. I like that a lot. Uh, I mean, I would definitely be there for all three of those. <laughs> I think it's a great <laughs> choice. Um, mine kind of was similar. I often, my brain just thinks of one thing and it's like, oh, that's what I'll do. So I was just thinking Julia Roberts and wedding. So I just do my best friend's wedding. I think after watching Steel Magnolias, I really love that movie. Um mm. And I, I don't know. I just, it's nice to see uh, Julia Roberts, I guess, more in her, in her prime at that point. Mm -hmm. I thought she was great in this. Like I was blown away. This was basically her second feature, you know, behind mystic pizza. Um, but I think she did such a great job in this and I would just like want to roll it into um, my best friend's wedding. So yeah, with all of our great double pity. features figured out, it is time for us to head to our Rushmore mountain. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? This one was very difficult for me to kind of pick a theme just because like there was just so many either actors to choose from or whatever. And so what I decided to do is essentially for us to pick our four favorite movies that star at least one of the leading ladies from Steel Magnolias. So whether it's Julie Roberts, Sally Field, Olympia Dukakis, Shirley MacLaine, Daryl Hannah or Dolly Parton, we can pick any four movies from those six actresses. Uh, Beth Ann, do you want to kick us off with your yes. Rushmore? Yes. So I'm going to cheat a little bit because that's what I, I do. I love it. It's my um, favorite way. The Shirley <laughs> MacLaine. Oh, what's what I do? The Shirley <laughs> MacLaine. I'm going to go her Downton Abbey spot. Okay. Mainly because that's the most, that's the role I kind of know her from, which is Perfect. sad. Yeah. Um, but that's the role. I haven't seen her really early, early stuff. But yeah, that. I think it's a great choice. And then Hook, Julia Roberts, at her, she already had the haircut. Um, Joe. For Sally Fields, I have chosen Sassy, the cat from Homeward Bound. <laughs> yes. I was I didn't know she played that. <laughs> yeah, and MJ Fox played uh, the Pitbull character. Who played the He's golden retriever? He was my favorite. Like, I, oh, I was remember. obsessed with that movie as a kid. Me too. I, yeah. I, I yeah. would play it round and round and round again <laughs> so i would choose that and the last one for daryl hannah is the kill bill i'm putting both of them together because in my mind they're the same movie it's just well, quinn had to break it up because yeah. no one wanted to watch a six-hour film which is ludicrous but you know <laughs> it, you know but um that's what i would say that'd be my rush more I think that's great. I think that's how Quentin season two, he calls them just yeah. the movie just kind of split up. So I think that that totally works. I was trying to look up who else was in uh, the exit of Michael J. Fox and Sally Field. I'm sure there are people who are listening just like, it's this oh, person. Yeah. I, now I need oh, to. Don Amici, it looks like. Don Amici. Ooh. 
I don't know who that is. Cocoon and Trading Places. Shadow. Heaven Can Wait. I don't know. I apologize to all the Don Amici fans out there. I might even be saying that wrong. And I Please like and subscribe to the show. podcast. Yeah. yeah. Please. <laughs> he was a leading, a debonair leading man in over 40 films in the 14 years. Dang. And his greatest go. role that we know him as is a golden retriever. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. He's probably in the recording booth like, what the fuck am I doing? What is this? <laughs> like, the dog's talking. What are these it. goddamn agents booking me for? <laughs> and some sage is like, this is it. the role you'll be known for. <laughs> this yeah, is the exactly. <laughs> You've got to do it. Um, Leah, how about you? What's on your Steel Magnolias Rushmore? Okay, so for Sally, we're going to go with Spider-Man 2. Because Thank you. as yes. much as I love hot Aunt May in the Holland Spider-Verse, mm. she is the perfect Aunt May. As there's some truth to that. that. Um, she's the perfect. She's my favorite Aunt May out of all of them. She is the best Aunt May. Yeah. For Shirley, I went with Noelle, which was the only movies I knew in her IMDb, but it's a really, really cute little movie on Disney Plus if you haven't seen it yet. Is that uh, is it a Christmas one? Yeah, Anna Kendrick. Yeah, Anna Kendrick, Anna Kendrick okay. and uh, Bill Hader, <laughs> right? Oh, yes. Bill Hader? It's oh, wow, cool. So cute. Um, she plays one of the elder elves in that movie. And nice. Is really adorable. For Julia, I went with Pretty Woman. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Do you remember me? No, I'm sorry. I was in here yesterday. You wouldn't wait on me? Oh. You work on commission, right? Uh, yes. Big mistake. Big. Huge. Mm. Gotta do it. A classic. Like, what yeah. else needs to be said about that? And then I didn't know a lot of movies that Olympia Dukakis was in, but I love Mr. Holland's Opus. I haven't seen it in years. Uh, I couldn't tell you who she is in it, but great movie. <laughs> yeah. She's always solid. I thought about putting um, Moonstruck on there, but I really, I don't love that movie, but Olympia Dukakis is great in it. Yeah. Um, and she's, I've, she's solid. I've only seen parts of Moonstruck and not enough to remember it. So I was yeah. sad I could not add Olympia Dukakis to my Rushmore. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I maybe I may have gone in with like too high of expectations of everyone like Moonstruck's great, and I watched it like I don't get it. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm sure like I'm glad that people love it, but it just wasn't for me. But um, Matt, does Olympia Dukakis make your Rushmore Mountain? Uh, in in spirit, but in she spirit. does not. Okay, make, perfect. Not not on this list. Um, honestly, though, like Steel Magnolias with Olympia Dukakis or any of those women would should probably make my list. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the sake of doing the other movies, I got to go with two Sally Fields right out the gate. Got to go Gump, mm. you know, Forrest nice. Gump. And then uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm OK. I'm just I'm very naked right now. What happened to your face? It's filthy. It is? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was cleaning the chimney. We have no chimney. What? Oceans for Julia. Yeah. And then yep. Ben, you already said it. My best friend's wedding. Love that movie. Julia's Solid. great in it. Yeah. She's so good. You can come to my double feature and check it out. Yeah, I will. I'll be there. <laughs> um, for me, my Sally Field that I had in there was Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, honey. It's me. <gasps> Happy birthday. I think that's a pretty awesome movie. And that role for her is like anytime I think you're going up against Robin Williams, it's like a challenge, you know, so to speak, yeah. I think she does a great job with it. Um, I didn't even think about this till I said that, but along those lines, hook with Julia Roberts, uh, I think she also did a great job in there. That's just my childhood in a movie. Basically mm -hmm. it's just hook. Like I, I love that movie so much. And that was my, I'm glad we all kind of had that same thought when we saw that haircut. It's like, Oh, Tink. Okay, cool. Got it. That's where this came from. That totally makes makes sense. Um, by the way, she had like a solid run there. Julie Roberts, Mystic Pizza, Steel Magnolias, Pretty Woman, Flatliners, Sleeping with the Enemy, Hook, Pelican Brief. Like the, that was a solid mm -hmm. four year run there that she yeah. had. Just came out of the gate. 
for Shirley MacLaine, I went with the movie Bernie. I don't know if you guys have seen it with mm-hmm. Jack Black uh, and Matthew McConaughey. I've heard of it. Really good, kind of like dark comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, she and Jack Black basically to share the whole movie together. So you can just imagine like they're just hilarious um, sharing all their screen time. Uh, and then I, I did my best to do one from each person, but I could not not have Notting Hill on my <laughs> list like that has like just quickly become one of my favorite rom-coms that I just discovered <laughs> like last year. I think it was, it might've been this year, but I love that movie so much. Um, so I put that on here and then I, as an honorable mention, I did also have oceans, the whole trilogy, because that's a, another cast, quite the ensemble cast that I think Julia fits into mm-hmm. perfectly. Does he make you laugh? He doesn't make me cry, but yeah. I love all of those Rushmores. But yeah, Beth Ann, thank you so much for coming back on. This was yeah. awesome to have you guys here yes. to talk about Steel Magnolias. This was a really fun movie, a really fun episode to record. Do you want to let people know again where they can find you guys? You can find us wherever you get podcasts. If you want like specific links, we have a website, shewillrockyou.com. Has links to everything you could ever want. Yes, and things you don't want. Anyway. <laughs> that's how we like to uh sell our our merch it's like we have everything you need and definitely don't need it. it's all there but um yeah thank you again so much uh for spending some yes, time thanks. with us we hope you guys enjoyed this episode um yeah stay tuned next month we're getting into kurosawa films which i think is going to be quite the shift but it's going to be a lot of fun um go check out the buddy holly episode and their uh clubhouse segment Thank you again, everyone, for your support, and we will see you next week. See ya. I managed in a few decades to marry the two most worthless men in the universe and then proceeded to have the three most ungrateful children ever conceived. The only reason people are nice to me is because I have more money than God. Now, I'm not about to open a new can of worms. Weezer. What? If this is really how you feel, it isn't healthy. Maybe you should think about coming down to the guidance center and talking to someone with their help. I'm not crazy, Malin. I've just been in a very bad mood for 40 years.